Howdy, diamond painting friends. Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Hi, Diamond Painting friends. Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, joined by my fabulous assistant, Sophia, my daughter Sophia. Hello. <laughs> who is currently home from school on social distancing. <laughs> I almost said social media. But you've been on that a lot too, I bet. Corona vacation. Corona vacation 2020. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we're laughing because whenever we're together, we basically just laugh. Yeah. I feel like, <laughs> which is great. I hope you all are well. Um, boy, it's so crazy time right now. We've all been home. We're getting a little stir crazy, I think. That's, <laughs> that's part of why we're just laughing uncontrollably. But you know, when the world is stressful, sometimes all you can do is laugh, right? Try to keep it light, even, uh, even though we're pretty stressed out sometimes around here. But we got to be real about it. Right? We're all feeling a little something about what's going on, and we just have to, uh, yeah, use it to develop compassion for others. That's what we're trying to do around here, and trying to keep our sanity yeah. <laughs> with various degrees of success, I would say. <laughs> Today our video is going to be all about how to get started with diamond painting. If you're new here to Tiny Worlds of Wonder, welcome. It's great to have you. Um, we're going to be talking about the first steps that you might want to take if you're getting started with diamond painting, some essential tools that you might need um, for your very first canvas, and just some fun and shenanigans thrown in. Sophia is going to be my props mistress for the day, because <laughs> so, I've got a lot of stuff to show you here. All right, let's jump right into this. So if you want to get started diamond painting, the first thing you have to do Sophia, mm -hmm. is to acquire said diamond painting. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna need one to start with. I'm showing you today a canvas from Treasure Studios Art by Nicolie Payne. She's the artist for this beautiful decorative horse canvas. Now this is actually a present for someone. Hopefully they're not watching today. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully their quarantine viewing is taking them elsewhere. Um, but this is a beautiful piece. I have not set a single drill on this, so I can't speak to any of the particulars of the canvas, but the image itself is beautiful. Of course, I'll link it down below. Now, if you're looking into purchasing a diamond painting for the first time, I'm gonna try to direct you to a couple of stores because if you're brand new to all this, the diamond painting community has a huge issue with copyright infringement. So if you are shopping on AliExpress or Amazon or any place that is doing a lot of drop shipping from China, then chances are the image you're looking at is copyright infringed. Um, I hate to say it, but it's just true and people need to know this up front. So be super careful. The only time that I'm shopping on AliExpress or Amazon these days is if I find a canvas by one of the old masters that I know is in the public domain. So just for reference, basically, to my understanding, anything that was created before 1924 is in the public domain, at least in the United States. So I encourage you to shop at a place that licenses images legally, that doesn't just download them and then produce them and then never gives the artist one single penny for their work. Because I just don't think it's ethical. I'll stick on the <laughs> side of the screen. <laughs> a little graphic that lists every single diamond painting company I know of that produces legally licensed images right here, right now in March 2020. Now I hope a lot more companies will be added to this list soon. Um, but as of this moment, these are the only ones that I know about. And believe me, I've looked at a lot of them, okay? So use that info when you're shopping. Be cautious, be careful. But after you have acquired said diamond painting, <laughs> there are a few steps that you might wanna take to kinda get set up and started. 
Okay, so there are a couple tools that I recommend that you get right up front if you feel like you're gonna be serious about this at all, okay? The first is an LED light pad. LED light pad? <laughs> LED light pad. <laughs> <laughs> this is what an LED light pad looks like. I recently showed this in my um, five tools that I can't or don't wanna live without video that I'll link up in the cards. But I'll also put a link to this in the description below if you're in the market for one. What this does is sit behind your diamond painting and shine light up from the back side. And it really helps to see with darker symbols where your drills or your diamonds are really going to be set. So that's one tool that I really recommend you get from the beginning if you have any kind of eye strain issues or vision issues or even if you just feel like you're gonna be doing more than one canvas in your whole life, okay? So that's a pretty indispensable tool. Another thing you're gonna need is acid-free tape, like washi tape. Now I say acid-free tape because things like masking tape can leave um, discoloration on the edges of your canvas, and they're just more interactive with your adhesive. So. Let me show you what we're gonna do with this. Now a lot of canvases come with clear covers and a lot of canvases come with paper covers. I'll show you an example of what paper adhesive might look like. If this was a paper adhesive canvas, this would be laid out in strips all across the top of my image here and I couldn't actually see the image. Um, but in either case, a lot of times what we have to do to keep um, this area along the edges of our canvas clean, where we have a little bit of overhang of glue, is to actually run a little strip of acid-free tape um, around the edges to protect it. Otherwise, we're gonna get a bunch of sleeve lint and gook and cat hair, in my case. Actually, in my case, oh, <laughs> that didn't work at all. All right, resume. We leave the reel in unedited raw footage in our videos, don't we, Sophia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life around here. All right, so I'm just gonna run a little strip of this, not over my symbols, of course. Don't cover up anything important, but just along sort of the outside edge here. And this is gonna keep dirt and hair, like I said, my own hair, popcorn crumbs. <laughs> I like to eat popcorn. Well, I diamond paint. Who doesn't? Who doesn't, right? <laughs> so I would do that around all four edges of my canvas, anywhere that my adhesive overlaps um, the unprinted area, if that makes sense. The non-symboled area. <laughs> oh, my words are escaping me today. <laughs> Now the other thing that you might wish to do before you start is to replace the clear cover on your canvas because you're gonna be peeling this back in a large section and some of it's gonna be exposed to the elements while you're working, say, in one area here. The rest of this is exposed. Some people like to actually replace this cover with either a backing paper, something like this, this was gifted to me by a lovely subscriber. You know who you are. Thank you very much. Um, what I could do here is just peel the glue. You can actually buy diamond painting glue on AliExpress. That's one thing I don't mind buying on AliExpress is all the tools. Um, but I can actually peel the top paper off of this so that there's no adhesive on the back side here and replace my clear cover with that backing paper. Don't leave the adhesive on the back, just use the paper. Does that make sense? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> In order to use this roll of adhesive, I would have to take the adhesive off the back. I would just peel the paper off. Oh. Okay. You can also just buy backing paper with no adhesive on it. Um, I actually usually just leave my clear cover in place and work with my clear cover. So either way you decide to do this is totally fine. Another option might be to replace the cover with parchment paper, not wax paper, not 
aluminum foil, not saran wrap. Oh yeah. <laughs> the only thing <laughs> that works for this process is parchment paper, okay? I can't tell you how many disasters I have seen on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube with people who have tried to replace their clear cover with wax paper or something other than parchment paper. Only parchment paper will work. Shall I say it again? Only parchment paper will work. Don't try anything else. Okay, so after you've protected the edges of your canvas, replace the clear cover if you want to. You don't have to. I never have and I'm super happy with how my canvases have gone. After that, it is time to kit up your drills. Okay, now here's what I mean by kitting up your drills. Your drills are gonna come either in long strips um, inside plastic wrappers or they're gonna come like these. in individual baggies. Now, companies that pack in individual baggies have my heart forever. <laughs> I love these. I'll often just work out of the baggies if they come this way. If they come in the long strips of plastic, then what I usually do is kit my drills up in containers, just small bead containers. Now there's a method to my madness here because I don't actually like looking at the key on my canvases at all. I hate that. It adds an extra step to me. So what I usually do is kit up my drills. What I have over here is a legend. So I have color number one is DMC number 154, which is a dark purple. And the symbol on my canvas is gonna be a diamond, okay? So I would find that color. I happen to know what that one looks like. I would find that color. In my pre-bagged drills, all I'm gonna do is take a Sharpie. Sharpie? <laughs> Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping my props mistress on her toes here. And then on my baggie, I'm just gonna draw a symbol of a diamond on this color so that when I encounter the diamond symbol on my canvas, I don't have to look and reference that legend every time. I just know when I see the diamond, it's this color. That's what I've done on my bead containers too. So one of my colors was DMC824. I just drew a little arrow. That's the symbol on my chart or on my um, canvas. So every time I see that down to the right arrow, I know it's that color, and it saves me looking at my legend for the rest of the canvas, okay? So I highly recommend before you start that you kit up all your colors. It's a bit of a tedious process, more so with the bead containers maybe. Um, and I just use some really high-tech masking tape and a Sharpie for that process. You can use labels, but I find that paper labels stick to my containers and it makes the containers harder to reuse. So masking tape actually comes off really easily. I have done so many canvases with these bead containers, just reusing them over and over and over. So after you've kitted up all your drills, the time has come for you to actually diamond paint. And that is where the magic happens, okay? So <laughs> your diamond painting kit, more than likely, came with some tools. Mine came with a fantastic tool kit, actually. This adorable pink bag with my pen and some different tips and some tweezers, which are awesome. I've got some different placers, so if I have like six drills in a row that are the same color, I can do those. Three drills in a row the same color. This one is nine, I think. Um, so all I would do to actually get started here is peel back some of this or peel back the top cover on my pink wax, stab my pen into that pink wax a couple times, get it nice and full. Okay, I'm actually going to take this squishy off here. And let's set a couple drills, just a couple. 
I haven't put any drills on this canvas yet, but I'd love to. Now I'm guessing that this entire background is white. <laughs> so let me grab my white drills. Normally I'd go through, of course, and label all of these before I start at all. I know you guys are not gonna be able to see the details of what I'm doing here from, from as high as you are. But you can see the basic process, I think. So I'm gonna take some of these white drills. I'm gonna dump them in my little boat here. Seal it up, don't spill them all over the floor. These are very small round drills. Usually they're bigger than this. I think I'm gonna like this company, Treasure, Treasure Studios Art. All right, so like I said, some people replace their whole clear cover. I just peel mine back and I actually just work kind of in one little section at a time. So I'm gonna poke down into my drill boat, grab one, and then when I see a Z on my canvas, we're gonna stick it on. And then repeat for the next few hundred hours. <laughs> it really is that simple. And it really is such a fun craft. If you're just getting started, I hope you have a blast with it. If you have done a thousand canvases, and there are some of my viewers who have literally done hundreds of diamond paintings, it's amazing. Would you please share in the comments below your top tip for getting started? Like one thing you wish you had known on your very first canvas that can help some other viewers who are just getting started. So if you would do that, I would really appreciate it. I'll keep you posted on how this canvas comes along, of course. If there are any steps that you take when you are setting up your, your diamond painting when you're just getting started that I missed, would you please also leave those in the comments below? For now, stay safe, stay at home, try to keep your spirits up, listen to some upbeat music, Take a walk in the great outdoors, at least six feet from other people. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, spread some joy wherever you are and wherever you're able to. And Sophia and I will catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>